This guy has control over sharks, electric eels, and even aquatic microbes. Make seafood puns at your own peril. Let's go. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top five facts about Aquaman. Think you know the Justice League? Click below to sign in with your Google or Facebook account and take the new trivia quiz on WatchMojo.com. It's pretty hard, but get it right and you could win a collectible box from Culturefly, loaded with exclusive toys, accessories, and apparel. Follow the link in the description. Number five, DC had to work to get fans to take him seriously. Fine, if Zack's gonna be Superman, I wanna be Green Lantern. But I'm Green Lantern. You can be Aquaman. I don't wanna be Aquaman, he sucks. <laughs> Many of Aquaman's early adventures were lighthearted and fun. That lightheartedness really came to the fore when Aquaman starred in Saturday morning cartoons in the 1960s and 70s. Magnificent piece of work, my good man. My congratulations. Thank you. As a result, the Sea King has long been identified with cheesy catchphrases like Great Neptune and by the Beard of Poseidon. The DC Comics superheroes. Some of them more super than others. That guy just talks to fish. Hey. He was also perceived as having a useless power and became the butt of jokes by many stand-up comics. Out of here. There's plenty of fish in the sea. Did he mean that metaphorically or, uh... In the comic books, DC has worked tirelessly to play up his dark side and have pointed out that he is actually incredibly powerful. Number four, he has a lot in common with Thor. Marvel's Son of Odin and DC's Sea King have a surprising number of similarities. For example, both are heroes who belong to two worlds. For Thor, it's Asgard and Earth. For Aquaman, it's the surface world and the seas. Both Atlantis and Asgard are worlds drawn from ancient mythology. They also each have a mythological weapon. Thor's hammer Mjolnir and Aquaman's trident from Poseidon. In addition, both Aquaman and Thor have been the ruler of their respective kingdoms. They also have similar family problems too, namely Thor's villainous half-brother Loki and Aquaman's evil half-brother Orm. We could go on and on, but you get the idea. DC's Aquaman has a lot in common with Marvel's Thor. Also Namor. Ah, Atlantis, my capital city awaits. Is it not magnificent? Number three, his kingdom is way bigger than you think. All I want, all I've ever wanted, is peace and security for Atlantis. Aquaman is the king of Atlantis, an underwater continent that sank beneath the seas eons ago. But Aquaman's domain stretches beyond Atlantis. It basically includes all the land under the oceans and seas, and that's a hell of a lot of land. Since approximately 70% of the Earth's surface is covered by water, that means Aquaman is the ruler of 70% of the planet. By contrast, the entire continent of Asia occupies less than 9% of the total surface area. With those numbers, you realize that we share the world with him and not the other way around. Number two, he will kill if he needs to. Please, brother, help me! I believe this is mine. Unlike most superheroes, Aquaman is a legitimate ruler. As the king of the seas, he commands a massive army, and in battle, he and his soldiers will kill if need be. No survivors. Still, in his everyday superhero adventures, Aquaman tends to uphold the usual code of not taking human life. However, at one point, he did attempt to kill his archenemy, Black Manta, only to kill Black Manta's father by mistake. The Sea King also hunted down Manta after the villain killed Aqua Baby, intent on killing him, but he ultimately controlled his wrath and let the murderer live. The truth is, we were only following orders. Get them out of my sight. Number one, a high profile TV pilot was Deep Sixed. <laughs> Aquaman showed up on the popular superhero TV series Smallville, and his episode delivered season 5's best ratings. Fan interest? Oh yeah. I knew I'd find you here. Recognizing the potential for a new Smash show, a pilot was ordered, written, cast, and shot. Justin Hartley won the title role, 
with Lou Diamond Phillips cast as his adoptive father. Unfortunately or not, the network passed on the project and never aired the pilot. But when released on iTunes, it quickly shot to the top of the download charts. Critical response was positive too, but the show still never surfaced as a series. You know that siren was just the beginning. There are creatures in the deep you couldn't imagine in your worst nightmares. Well, that's reassuring. Thanks a lot. Do you agree with our choices? A power bam, a boom, a what other fascinating facts about DC's King of Atlantis should have been included? For more enthralling top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. <laughs>